Science on Brainiac tonight. We see if a mannequin can fly. We wind up the cheeky girls. Come on, get with it. Faster! Faster! And our Brainiac babes get banging down at the farm. <laughs> Take one very large deserted warehouse. Introduce some low-amp, 9-volt electrical equipment, one Brainiac, and you have yourself an experiment. The current that these electrode pads will carry produces electrical impulses that will stimulate specific muscle groups. This week, can our Brainiac make a great first impression on a romantic candlelit dinner date whilst being electrocuted? Our Brainiac has four electrode pads attached to the right-hand side of his body. Two on his arms and two on his back. When the electrical current flows into his body, it causes his muscles to contract. <laughs> There's clearly no doubt this dinner date will be remembered, <laughs> but for all the wrong reasons. And it's about to get a whole lot worse. So, a lack of wine appreciation, conversation by a few grunts and groans, and the inability to eat with manners means our Brainiac will have to dine alone. Making a great first impression, one more thing you can't do whilst being electrocuted. <laughs> that make you go, hmm. Here's one for you. Do people who can't speak make a sound when they burp? Things that make you go, hmm. Now, here's something I can guarantee. I can guarantee that every single bloke watching this show right now, every single one, will, when they were a kid, at some point, have taken one of their sister's dollies and tied a handkerchief to its arms, then chucked it out the bedroom window to see if it worked as a parachute. You did. I know you did. I also know that every time it would plummet to earth like a big brick. Well, as you know by now, we here on Brainiac never really did the whole growing up thing. So today, we're going to be doing more of the same. Only this time, we're not going to be using our sister's dollies. Right, before we try out any parachutes, we need to see how long a mannequin takes to fall without anything attached to it. We're going to be lobbing them all off this 100-foot crane and time them as they hurtle or sail gracefully to Earth. OK, here we go. Three, two, one, go! Down, 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 down. Bang! Bang! OK. What was that? Two seconds, 48. It was also fantastic. <laughs> so, with no parachute and nothing to slow down the inevitable plummeting force of gravity, it's 2.48 seconds from drop to crash. The end result? Well, her legs survived intact, but a uh, catastrophic loss of limbs, bisected torso, and quite a nasty scratch on the face. But all in all, she's dead. Now, let's try one with a parachute. We've got a variety of different uh, parachutes to try, but we're going to start with a faithful old friend, the black bin bag. Now, the science behind this is fairly simple. As the mannequin falls, the bin bag will open, like that sort of thing, filling with air and creating drag through the sky, thus slowing the mannequin's descent to the ground. Right, let's lob this baby off something high. OK, I'm not too confident it'll actually fly, but I am hoping it'll take a little bit longer to fall than the no-parachute version. That's quality. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Down, 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 down. Oh. Oh. I don't know if that made it worse. 3.2. 3.2, it worked! 
Well, it took a moment, but all three bags did eventually deploy, which slowed her down a fraction. And the damage, catastrophic shattering of both wrists. Oh, and a severed foot. Onward and upward. OK, next we're going for the Mary Poppins approach. What we've done here is prepare a kind of main body of the parachute with these three big umbrellas, but then here's the really clever bit. This is a kind of reserve chute, just in case there's a problem with the main canopy. Heaven forbid. Oh, and I always had a bit of a soft spot for Mary Poppins. Well, I did. So I'm going to blindfold her because it might be quite scary up there. So we'll put that on. Right, if we collapse all the umbrellas to get it onto the crane, and don't forget to open it. All right, take it up. Down, down, down. This might just work. Just a suggestion, we might want to stand a bit further back because I think it might drift. Good luck, Mary. OK, here we go. Three, two, one, go! Mary! She's coming up. What was the time? 4.7. 4.7? That's a second and a bit. Well, a good time, but umbrella number one collapsing early on didn't help. Swiftly followed by two and three. Only the reserve chute holding firm throughout. The net result? Terrible spinal injuries. Basically, she snapped in half. Mary never really stood a chance. Well, Mary Poppins was actually pretty good. The bin bags were a bit rubbish, to be honest. This, though, I've got a lot of faith, and we've been a bit clever here. What we've done is cut a hole in the centre. And that's because it was discovered after the Second World War that parachutes work better with a hole in the middle to allow some of the air to escape, which means they drop in a straight line rather than swinging crazily around. Done it? Ready? Right. Um, just for a change, I'm going to lob this one off. Right, so this should be the closest thing to the sister's dolly handkerchief scenario. Mannequin, parachute. Uh, right. Well, I'm ready. Wish me luck and stand back. Might work. Down, down, down. It's falling, down. This is hard, it's surely. Oh, no, we're still going up. Oh, God. OK. Are we ready? Here I go, lifting mannequin up, discovering how heavy mannequin is. Right. Hold up. Strings are out. I have the chute. I think I'm ready. Go. Down, down, down. <laughs> hey, that wasn't bad! Yeah! A truly graceful descent. The chute deploys perfectly, and our World War II paratrooper bites the dust in 4.8 seconds. A tenth of a second better than the umbrellas. Well done, Tommy. So, how does he look? Kyle. Look! That's not bad, actually. I mean, he's intact. Well, his hand's come off, but you can grow another one of those, probably. That's... I mean, it would have saved him. And his foot. His foot's a bit broken. And his leg. But other than his hand, his foot, and his, and his other foot, his hand and his leg... Oh, and his face. His foot, his, his both feet, his hand, his leg, and his face, and that hand. Other than that, it would have saved his life. Well done. Dead he may be, but Tommy has taught us some valuable lessons. Right, we've had a bit of a think about this parachute business and we've come up with this. We think it's the ultimate parachute. We've combined everything we've done so far. We're using garden refuse bags. They're nearly as light as the bin bags, but a lot stronger. We've cut holes in the top like we did in the bed sheet, and we've fitted an emergency reserve umbrella just because we could, really. Oh, and we're using two Brainiacs to launch it so it should get away cleanly. Right, load it up. Let's do this. So, have our previous mannequins died in vain? Learned enough in their suicidal flights to have made the ultimate flotation device. Let's lob him off and see. Dot watch? Yep. OK, you ready? Three, two, one, go! Down, 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 down. Oh, oh, oh! Oh! Go on! 4.9. We did it! <laughs> Not by a lot, but it worked. Right, let's have a look. Look at that! She's intact! Everything's attached. That's genius. That's good work, Brainax. Well done. So, there you go. If ever you find yourself needing to jump off a 100 or foot so cherry picker, what you need is two garden refuse sacks, a few bits of string, and a very small umbrella. And you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm not even speaking any different.
on. <laughs> Hi. Yo, <laughs> oh my god, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh sh but <laughs> I didn't think I'd done it right then, so. Hi, I'm Katie from Clara and you're watching Brainiac. <laughs> oh my god. OK, you've got something to do, a job on, something at work, and you've got to get it done. Now, are you better operating under pressure, on the very edge of your nerves, with all systems go? Or are you at your best when you're more relaxed and you can make cool, calm decisions? So, in a nutshell, which is best, chilled or stressed? Ah, oh, Cheeky Girls. Come the on. Cheeky Girls, the closest thing we could get to cloned human beings without the use of a quack scientist and a test tube. Perfect, then, for our experiment. We've got a few tests to try out on these two, but first we need to get them in the right frame of mind. Thread the needles. A session of stressing for Cheeky Girl Gabriella. Loud music and lots of very small needles to thread. An hour or two of this should wind her up nicely. Meanwhile, cheeky girl 2, Monica, is having an altogether more restful time. So your deep breathing exercises just to relax your body. So you want to okay. close your eyes, place your palms out. If you breathe in through your nose, your cage expands, let all the stresses of the day melt away. An hour each in their respective sides of the lab, and they'll be ready for testing. We'll check up on them later in the show. Oh, stop. Not like that. No. Hmm. This object has been magnified 450 times. It's a common household item. You could say you've been caught with your pants down if you get stuck without it. What do you think it is? Find out after the break. Earlier, we showed you this. It's been magnified 450 times. Although it's not a character from Star Trek, it does wipe out Klingons from Uranus. Yep, it's your bog-standard roll of toilet paper. Dear John, I don't know how brave you are, but this is something I certainly wouldn't do. I'm led to believe it is possible to purify your own pee to the point where it's drinkable. If it's true, would you be prepared to show us? Not you peeing, but you drinking it. Much respect if you're up for it, Damien from Liverpool. Damien, you're twisted, mate, but I'm going to give it a go. As you can see, I've got three pint glasses in front of me. The first one is filled with a well-known brand of bottled water. The second one, tap water. I quite happily drink either of those two. The question today is, do I have enough faith in science to drink what's going to go into the third? My own purified pee. First off, I need an unpurified sample. Now, drinking your own pee is nothing new. NASA astronauts do it all the time. But I've got a feeling that their methods might be a bit more high-tech than the ones we're going to be using today. There we go. One pint of pee. I've got a fancy little gizmo here. It's called a TDS meter. It measures the total dissolved solids in a sample of water. Anything between 300 and 600 parts per million is considered drinkable tap water. Anything below 10 is considered to be really pure. First up, our sample of bottled water. Now that's coming in at around 350. Next, our tap water, about 440 for that one. Lastly, let's have a look at our P. Good grief. That's so far off the scale, I've got to multiply it by 10. 3,750 parts per million. That's going to take quite a bit of purifying. That's the challenge today, then. Can I use a bit of backyard science to turn this sample into something as drinkable as one of these? Here's the backyard bit. I've got an ordinary spray gun that you can pick up at any garden centre. And here's the clever bit. This is a reverse osmosis filter. I'm going to connect up the two parts so that the spray gun forces my unpurified pee through the filter, the waste products come out this bottom tube, and hopefully the purified water out of this tube. Hopefully, that is. 
95% of your pee is made up of water, about 2% is urea, and the rest is minerals. Building up a nice amount of pressure. The reverse osmosis system we're using is a small-scale version of what yachts use to make seawater drinkable. Ah, oh, we're up to maximum pressure now. I can hear the release valve going. What I'm going to do now is release the pressure from the garden thingy through the filter and hopefully our water will come out nice and pure. The pump that is used needs to be able to create about two atmospheres of pressure. That's the maximum amount this one can do. Oh, it's going all over my arm. Oh. Well, there we have it. Oh, Lord, still smells a bit. Well, I'm not drinking that. I think we're going to put it through another couple of times. It still stinks a bit, but now's the moment of truth. Now, remember, we had a reading of 3,750 last time, so this time we've got... 550. Well, that's supposed to be safe, so I guess I'd better give it a go. Hmm, plenty of nose. Mm, mm. Ugh. Maybe if you're in the middle of the desert and there's nothing else to drink, then just possibly, but otherwise, no way. So, to answer Damien's question, yes, you can purify your own pee to make it drinkable, but it tastes like shit. <laughs> yummy, yummy, tea time. Oh no! No matches! Hold on! What's this? Oh! A Van de Graaff generator! Plug it in and switch it on. Oh, yikes! 20,000 volts should do the trick! Hooray! Who needs matches? Cool! Tina Turner loves her science. Though she has, of course, now become an international singing star, she's never forgotten those school days she spent in the lab down in Nutbush. Whenever she gets a break from her busy schedule, she likes to get out her Bunsen burner and blow something up. Once she arrives at location, our international singing superstar toddles daintily across the uneven ground. She then considers her vehicle of choice and opts for the one on the end because she hates foreign cars. Now it's down to business. She decides to use a track of guttering to carry today's source of ignition to the car of her choice. It's a favourite method for our sweaty chanteurs as she carefully angles the track along the ground adjusting as she goes and eventually lining it up under the tank of the car. And her fire starter for today, petrol. Being highly combustible, she's careful not to spill a drop and fails miserably. This much petrol contains the equivalent of 15,000 calories, the same as 60 hamburgers. But Tina hasn't got food on her mind right now. Then she's handed the vital tool of her trade. Your Bunsen burner, Miss Turner. Petrol lit, she watches with ill-disguised excitement as the flame travels speedily towards its target. The car's bulging tank full of fuel. Job done, Tina bursts forth with the music that has become her theme. You're simply the best. Turner, simply the best at science. Ah! 
alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, all drugs that make your days zip along, make you glad to be alive. But there's a better one. A really good drug, and it comes without any dangerous side effects like bronchitis, hangover, or death. And it's free. Oh! Adrenaline, the stuff your body makes to give you a natural high. But how good a drug is it? We've got ourselves a weedy man. Weighing in at nine stone four, he can barely support the weight of his flimsy clothing. But can we make him into a hulk? The fairground punch ball is always a good place to show off. A mighty wallop, the bell goes off, and you're guaranteed to look dead hard. Always good to impress the ladies. Time for our puny fellow to have a go. One mighty blow. And he gets himself a pitiful score of 100. Yes, he's as weedy as he looks. The question is, can we get him to do better? Our limp-wristed weakling is scared of needles, so it's no adrenaline jab for him. He's also scared of heights, but we're ignoring that little technicality as we send him on the rides of his life. First, a little trip on a roller coaster. This should start the adrenaline coursing through his body. Three and a half minutes tearing around the track at a great height should generate plenty of the stuff. When the fear response is activated, it generates the release of a number of chemicals around the body designed to help us either fight or run. No chance for our weedy man to take up either of these options while he's trapped up here, which is just as we planned. That adrenaline should stay nicely bottled up inside his flimsy little body. Once he's down, we've got a bit more planned. Yeah, this should do it. A rotating 200-foot high barrel load of fun. So, have we made him any stronger? It's straight back to the punch ball for our flimsy chap. Before the ride, he scored 100. Can he do better? Now he's pumped full of adrenaline. He certainly can. He's more than doubled his score to 207. Our weed is now a muscle man, punching way above his weight. Well done. Go forth and multiply, weedy boy. Now the girls really love you. Things John Tickle's body can't do. Come in. Hello, Mr Tickle. Would you stand over there, please? Now, Mr Tickle, I'd like you to rotate your hand and foot in a clockwise direction. Now change the direction of your foot, keeping your hand the same. The difficulty in doing this lies in the fact that the brain can't separate the two commands it's been given. So when the commands are reversed, the brain tries to apply one rule to both actions. John Tickle has a huge brain, but not quite big enough. I'm sorry, nurse. I can't do that. Thank you, Mr Tickle. Goodbye. It's one more thing John Tickle's body can't do. Every day in the Brainiac Lab, our email inbox is flooded with suggestions for experiments from the great British public. The mad, the bad, and the downright stupid. Our dedicated research team go through each and every one of these suggestions and thoroughly assess them for their scientific value. Just a very few ideas actually go forward for testing. And if your idea is picked, be sure the Brainiac team will track you down. <laughs> No science, mate. <laughs> if you've written into Brainiac, we will find you. This week, we're in Penzance, grabbing chess boy genius Sean Hammond-Smith. If you've got an experiment you want to do, then send us an email and we'll drag you down as well. Our address is info at brainiac.co.uk. And if we do choose your experiment, this is where you'll come to get it done, under the enthusiastic eyes of Charlotte Hudson. Today, it's Sean Hannant-Smith. Dear Brainiac, I've got one of those things that make your bicycle sound like a motorbike. I want to know if I go faster when I've got it on. Hmm. Fair question. Yeah, uh, a boy and his bike. 
the closest relationship there is till you buy a dog. Sean's aim, to post the fastest time he can with and without the device on his back wheel. On your mark, get set. So why might you go faster if your bicycle sounds like a motorbike? Well, maybe the powerful added engine noise makes you pedal harder. Let's see. Firstly, without the device, his time is 16.76 seconds. So that's the time he has to beat. Will Sean go any faster when he has this thing attached to his bike? Well, the answer depends on which is stronger. His motivation to go faster because of the fancy noise he'll now make, or the slowing down effect of the friction on his back wheel. On your marks, get set. Now cycling with the added grunt of an engine, does the bike feel turbo-powered? Are his legs moving faster? Well, on the second run, his time does improve. 16.2 seconds over half a second faster. His name is Sean Hammond-Smith. He wanted to know if his bike went any faster with one of these attached to it. The answer, yes. I can do science, me. Down at the lab, the cheeky girls are helping us find out whether you perform better when you're chilled or when you're stressed. Gabriella is the stressed out cheeky girl. She's been threading very small needles for an hour. Meanwhile, Monica has been getting very mellow. After yoga, it's time for a good rub down. Are you ready for your massage? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Massage is known to reduce cortisol in the body, a hormone which is generated when you're anxious. Something a little more stressful for Gabriella, though. We're locking her mobile phone inside this strong box. We've told her she's got an urgent call. She gets a bunch of keys to open the padlock. The only thing we haven't told her is that none of the keys work. Quick, quick, come on. Stress has many effects on the body. Hair loss, premature graying, trembling, sweatiness, wind and indigestion are believed to be just a few of the jolly side effects. Come on. Whilst a more mellow outlook is believed to result in a longer life and better all-round physical fitness. Let's now test to see how well they perform in their respective states of mind. Don't get frustrated. We start with the dexterity test. You need to guide the ring around the maze without touching the sides. If you set off the buzzer, you need to start again. Three, two, one. Maximum concentration and a steady hand are what's needed here. If you get tense, blood flow increases by up to 400%. This means your muscles tighten up, which affects your fine motor skills and makes precision tasks more difficult. It certainly seems the case with our stress cheeky. For Monica, however, being relaxed has lowered the heart rate and blood pressure, and her massage will also have loosened her muscles, so they'll be less prone to twitches. Hence our chilled cheeky's success at this task. Yay! <laughs> chilled cheeky wins. Oh, I can't believe. So it's 1-0 to Monica, before the next challenge, a top-up for our girls. For stressed Gabriella, the nails down the blackboard treatment. <laughs> While the lovely Monica gets to have a nice sit down with some mellow music. Do you like some cocoa? Oh, thank you. Meanwhile, we set up the next challenge, the clarity of thought test. OK, Cheekies, now we're going to get you to sing the words of your song backwards. Here's a reminder. Boys, Cheeky, that are you. Boys, Cheeky, that are you. Girls, Cheeky, that are we. Girls, Cheeky, that are we. We're not looking for anything particularly tuneful here, fortunately. But the girls will only score if they get the words in the right reverse order. The more words correct, the higher the percentage score. First up, Monica. Chill, Cheeky. Three, two, one. Cheeky voice, no. So, boys, Cheeky, you are. 
When you feel relaxed, your brain can process information in a clear and logical way. When thought processes are uncluttered, you can act calmly and methodically. However, you can get too mellow, which means your brain isn't sparking at its full capacity, the way it can when you're under pressure. Chill Cheeky scores 43%. Stress cheeky. Three, two, one. Boys cheeky, the are you? Boys cheeky, the are you? Boys cheeky, the are you? Girls cheeky. A stressed brain has more blood flowing through it and increased oxygen levels. This means that because Gabriella is feeling wound up, her mind works at a faster rate and she motors through the task. Stress Cheeky scores 62%. She wins the challenge and celebrates in characteristic style. It's now one each. The final test to come. First, though, a nice lie down and a warm bubble bath for Monica. Your bath's ready, Bobby. Thank you. While cheeky girl Gabriella has a little child minding to do. <laughs> Which fruit floats? Featuring Professor Myang Lee and a big basket of fruit. Today, she's got a juicy little blackberry. So what's your guess? Will it sink or will it float? We'll give you a few minutes to argue about it and give you the answer after the break. Before the break, Professor Myang Lee posed the question, does her juicy little blackberry sink or does it float? Yes, blackberries sink. 101 uses for a wee. Hey you, athlete man. Do those feet feel a bit itchy after a run around? Maybe you've got athlete's foot. No problem, Sonny. Fix it with some wee wee. <laughs> Urine is packed full of ammonia making it both antifungal and antibacterial. So good that US Special Forces use it to sterilize wounds after surgery. Yes, so next time you get athlete's foot, get a few mates to wee on you. Relief at last. You know it makes sense. Things that make you go, hmm. Here's one for you. Why does mineral water that has trickled through mountains for centuries have a use-by date? Things that make you go, hmm. Down at the lab, the cheeky girls are helping us to find out whether you perform better if you're chilled... Faster! ...or stressed. No. Cheeky girl Monica is very mellow as she's just had a lovely lie down. <laughs> Meanwhile, cheeky girl Gabriella is slightly less chill. She was already a little tense after her previous activities, and an hour in the company of three children hasn't helped. <laughs> Time for the final test, a real brain burner. OK, cheeky girls, this is the third and final experiment. I'm going to give you a random selection of numbers. You have to remember the numbers and touch the numbered bottoms in the right order. And if that isn't hard enough, they're going to have to try and concentrate whilst enduring the nauseating rhythm of their hit single, Touch My Bum. Three, two, one. <whistles> Chill Cheeky, seven, six, two, three, nine. In theory, you can only remember a maximum sequence of seven numbers. Nine, seven, six, two. But we're expecting the cheeky girls to do better, given the huge brain power at their disposal. Chill cheeky. Two, three, six, seven, nine, two, seven. Chilled Monica has had an easy time of it so far today. However, her relaxed schedule seems to have affected her ability to think clearly, in as much as she ever had it. Too much chilling has made her just a little spaced out. 
Stress cheeky. Nine. Stress seven, causes the release six. of adrenaline into the blood, which makes the heart beat faster and increases the blood flow to the larger muscles and the brain. This aids both concentration, remembering the numbers, and muscular ability, slapping of the bottoms. So we are expecting our stress cheeky to perform better at this task. <laughs> Chill Cheeky scored 12 out of 15. Stress Cheeky scored 14 out of 15. So it's a victory for stressed Gabriella. The overall results are Chilled Monica performed better on the buzzer test. Oh, thank you. Stressed Gabriella performed better on the lyrics test. Thank you. And Stressed Gabriella performed better on the numbers test. Yes, I won! Oh, and there you go. By the conclusive margin of two to one in our cheeky test, Stressed is best. In 1983, Twisted Sister sang... You can't stop rock and roll! Well, we here at Brainiac like to rise to a challenge. And with the help of a Brainiac favourite, the flamethrower, we think we stand a good chance. This flamethrower is burning propane, and the flame produced can burn at temperatures over 1,900 degrees Celsius. The stereo and cassette are made of plastic, and they just can't handle the heat. Can't stop rock and roll? You can with a flamethrower. We've created this special Brainiac workstation to simulate what would happen to your average office if there was a sudden rise in ocean levels due to a rapid increase in global warming. We've already established that the PC monitor isn't one of the better items to grab, and neither are cardboard storage boxes. However, a waste paper basket turned upside down worked a treat. This week, when the high water level alarm goes off, what office product will our Brainiac grab? And it looks like he's going for the notice board. This might be a great call by our office junior. He's into the water like a surfer diving off rocks. But will he float? Every cubic centimetre of cork consists of between 30 and 42 million cells, all of which are filled with air. It's been used for centuries because of its ability to float, and even this thin layer on the notice board is proving to be worthwhile. It looks like those millions of air-filled cells have done the trick for our office brainiac. The cork board, also an office buoyancy aid. OK, here's a test for you. I want you to watch this next film. It shows a group of people passing lunch boxes from one to another. What you've got to do is count the number of times this lunch box is passed from person to person. Now, it moves quite quickly, so you'll have to watch closely. So, all you have to do is keep an eye on that black lunch box as it goes from hand to hand, counting the number of passes that are made between the brainiacs. Okay, how many times was it passed around? If you said 12, then well done. But did you notice anything else in the film? Watch it again, only this time don't bother counting the passes. A film like this was recently shown to a group of 400 people. When they were told just to watch this sequence, not to count the passes, most people easily spot the, yes, Brainiac in a bee suit. She was on screen for a full six seconds, but did you spot her? In the test group, less than 10% of people noticed her first time round. 
Scientists call this inattentive blindness. It happens because we have a limited ability to absorb and remember detail when our brain is overloaded with information. But we've done another experiment as part of this show and we want you to tell us if it's worked. Throughout the programme we've included a number of deliberate visual errors. Did you spot any of them? Well, here they are. In 101 uses for a wee, athlete man's socks kept changing colour. First white, then blue, then red, and then back to blue again. At home, Dr Bunhead started cooking a pan of baked beans for tea. By the end, he's having carrots. And in the adrenaline experiment, our guinea pig was riding in a pink roller coaster, which changed to a blue one, then yellow, before turning back to pink again. Explosive of the week, where down at Big Bang Farm, our brainiac babes are doing their laundry. They're going to pick an explosive, blow something to smithereens, and then give it marks out of ten. But here's the best bit. You too can rate the explosion and win the chance to join the girls blowing stuff up on the final show of this series. But what explosive will the girls choose this week? After a quick consultation, it looks like a decision has been made. The girls' choice this week? Dynamite. This nitroglycerin-based banger is very powerful, perfect for breaking up the hardest rock. It remains a firm favourite with the old school of shot firer. And today, they're going to make a mess of two water-filled wheelie bins. Three of their friends will judge the explosion, giving it marks out of ten. And this is where you can take part. We're offering you the chance to join the girls blowing stuff up on the final show of this series. And all you have to do is vote. Digital satellite viewers, press the red button now, or you can text us on 87654. Rate the explosion out of 10 to enter our draw. Just text BANG, leave a space, and your score between 1 and 10. That number again, 87654. Today's explosive, dynamite, will be fired with a charge through a detonator cord embedded in the core of the explosive. It has the advantage of being waterproof, but one major disadvantage. If you spend too long handling nitroglycerin, it can cause a rapid drop in blood pressure, bringing on a headache known in the industry as banghead. No headache for our girls, though. They love nothing better than handling something that's gonna go pop. But no explosions till they've got back to a safe area, of course. The girls are ready. The three judges are set. Let's go! Whoa. Well, the girls like it, but what's the official verdict? Only a miserable two from Beryl. Massive water plumes not to her liking, obviously. Mavis, though, a lot more impressed. A big fat eight from her. Whilst Hilda, going for the middle ground as always, scores it four. That's the official line, but we're waiting for your verdict. The girls are happy enough, so it's back to the laundry. 